Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Yes, I'm ready for the event. Now this dot com, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Carly, I'm ready if you are. Hi. Okay, great. Thanks, Peggy. Here we go. So not only are you a woman in STEM, which alone is, you know, makes you uh, a trailblazer statistically, but you've held titles like commander and chief in a time when so few other women were doing it. So why did you do it and where did you get the courage to do it? I'm not so sure if it was so much courage as just being in the right place at the right time. I uh, feel like that uh, I'm lucky to work at NASA. I don't think largely uh, your gender is a big issue. And I think if you do your job well and you're in a position to be able to take the next step, I think we are afforded uh, those kind of opportunities. And I uh, really have enjoyed taking those steps, those next steps. Uh, they've been challenging for sure. And I think you have to be comfortable stepping beyond what's comfortable for you. I mean, you have to step outside of your comfort zone uh, in order to really excel. And I think people need to try and keep that in mind. Awesome. What type of obstacles or insecurities have you dealt with being a woman in a male-dominated field, and how do you overcome those? I think for me, um, just working extra hard, uh, I think I was very lucky in that there weren't a lot of obstacles put in my way. And uh, with hard work and determination, it, it just paid off for me. And so I think that determination, that, that will, is very important as, my, as well. What was your very first job? It's funny you should ask that. I always say I've never had a real job because I've always worked at NASA. After I got my PhD, I uh, did a postdoctoral fellowship at NASA, and from there uh, started working for one of the contractors in the biochemistry area, and then later w uh, joined NASA uh, directly. But it was still 10 years from the time I got my PhD until I was lucky enough to be selected as an astronaut. Uh, I think it's most important in your life to pursue those things that you really, really enjoy. Uh, because the journey is part of the path, and it's an important step in getting uh, where you want to be, I think. And why do women make great astronauts? I think it's because we're more flexible. <laughs> Actually, you know, I think uh, we talk a lot about expeditionary skills up here. Uh, we want people to be adaptable to the situation, adaptable to the personalities they're working with. And I think that adaptation is important uh, because you're working in such a, an unusually different environment. Uh, you know, being up here where there is no gravity changes your perspective on a lot of things. And I think that being able to adapt to lots of different environments is also important. So adaptability is probably the best answer I can give you there. Awesome. And what do you miss most about planet Earth and what are you looking forward to accomplishing when you return? I miss a variety of food and of course my husband and my family. It's, it's, uh, it's neat to be around friends and I can still call them and talk to them on the phone or uh, we do occasional FaceTime type of video conferences with family and, and that's all great but uh, of course I'd love to be back there with them. 
in general, I also am, one of my hobbies is pl uh, plants, and I really love plants, but I was lucky enough on this mission, uh, I've grown a couple of different types of cabbage, uh, and we actually got to eat some of that, so that was a plus for two reasons, not only just growing them, but actually getting to eat some too. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being an inspiration to women and girls everywhere. Now this is a huge fan of you. I'm very honored. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.